all right boys we're going to take this fence up a couple more feet it's going to end up looking like this fence and we'll show you how to do that in this uh short little video it's pretty easy And uh, first thing you want to do is just clear everything away from the fence. Any kind of branches and stuff from trees. Because they're going to be working probably on both sides of it. Um, and then second thing, take all these little clips off the top. I got a bunch of them off already, but I'm still working on it. Yeah, I got these left up here. And uh, whenever you cut them, just cut right there let that swing around that way you can reuse that clip when you put up your new when you put up your fence see there's one there's one we got all those ties loose now it's time to take loose this top railing and uh just start on one end pull them off one at a time you don't want to try to take the whole thing off at once. It's gonna, it's gonna bend. So just do, just do one piece at a time. There's one. This fence has been up for a long time, and this stuff, uh, it's actually coming loose. It's actually coming loose pretty easily. Well, that's a long piece there. Where's that end? Right there. Golly, can't buy that at the store. And here's the last piece. I don't know why I was trying to slide them out a while ago. <laughs> you can just lift them off. Um, there's that one. That one. And then the end piece just slides out. Or at least it's supposed to. Being a little. There it goes. Just drop it where it goes back. Next step, we want to go ahead and cut our extensions. And uh, for the extensions for these posts, you just use the same diameter as uh the posts that are already in the ground and uh, we're going to extend ours two and a half feet which is what we've already done over here you can kind of see the end result right there that's where they meet i spray painted these when i was done with them just gets you some silver paint silver matches chain link pretty good because uh the old posts didn't really match the new ones all right so now we need to cut these pieces they're going to be cut at 30 inches and here's a trick i do because i don't have a chop saw just put that right there on the end where it's flush. Get you a piece of tape. Measure out it 30 inches right there. And uh, I'm going to have to put this camera down. Just line it up right there where that 30 is and run that tape all the way around it until it meets itself back on the other side and you'll have a pretty clean straight cut. Anyway, that's uh, the end result how it looks. You just get a piece of tape all the way around it. That's my 30 inch mark. Well, we got all our pieces cut. These pieces are going to go on the inside of these. Uh, on my previous video, I showed y'all how to do that. Okay, so <clears throat> next thing you're going to want to do is figure out um, if you're going to put these in here and secure them, or if you're going to put them on the post. Uh, reason you, you want to put it on whichever side is going to be tighter, because whenever I was doing the side back there, um, I, I went ahead and just made them all. I put them all on these posts. And uh, then I came out and tried to tamp them down. And the, this post was too tight. So it just kept shoving this piece farther and farther up into there. I ended up doing it to where I ended up putting them on the post first. Because these posts are pretty tight. Some of them are pretty out of round. A lot of them are, um, looks like... Whenever they put this fence in, they hit it with a sledge. See how that's kind of, there's a lip on that. Uh, so on these, on that one for sure, we're gonna put it right there first. Well, this post looks like it's ready for uh, the extension to be put in there. The bottom of that tape, that's my halfway point. This thing's 16 inches, so I got, that's marked at eight inches. So I'll go ahead and stick it down in there. It's pretty tight. Get my shop hammer here. Just tap it on down till till you get to that mark. Just 
actually that's looser than I thought. All right, next step is putting uh, some indentations on this. You can get like a punch. Just put your three or four marks on there. That way when you put it on there, it, uh, it'll stay on there. You know, won't wobble around, won't come out. Uh, not that it's coming out, but um, you just don't want this piece dropping. You don't want that piece dropping down the post because then you're going to have nothing holding it. So one side has to hold it pretty good. And it, um, at this juncture, that post is not holding it very well at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and put these indentations on it. All right, so we got some indentations marked on it. We got one there, uh, one there, one there. And you'll know, you'll know you've hit far enough when you can feel inside there. You can feel where um, it's dented. All right, well, I changed my mind on this one. Um, I just went ahead and put the extension in the post. And uh, it fit in there pretty, pretty dang tight. That's how we're going to put it on there. But uh, just to show you, if you're, I mean... Say if you're gonna do it this way, which we're gonna probably do a few of them that way, you would wanna make sure you clamp this at the bottom. Um, you could even use two clamps, cause when you start to pound that thing down, you don't wanna keep pushing it down that post. So just get you something to clamp it really tight with. All right, let's uh, go ahead and set it on here. This one you can just kind of twist and it'll drop on down there right to where it needs to be. That's one post down and we still got to do that one and we got to do those two. Okay, so this one is a little different. This one is, uh, it's like mushroomed inside. It's not mushroomed out. Uh, so whenever they were tamping on it, it uh, put this pretty bad lip on it. You can either get you a Dremel and like grind all that away, which takes forever, or you can just get you a grinder and just cut a little bit of that off. I made my extensions a little tall because you don't want to make them to, um, exact because you're going to run into stuff like this that you're going to have to modify. So just make them a little tall, and then whenever you're done, run you a string line, cut them all evenly. All right, we got a little bit cut off. All, all you got cut off is like that much. Not much, not much at all. And uh, as you can see, pipe fits in there pretty loosely now. Just drops right on in there, so. Now, since that's the loose side, you're gonna put your indentations, just like a while ago, in your, uh, in your pipe. And stick your indentation, your uh, extension in there, and just drop it on down in there. It's easy as that. We'll probably do the same way on these two, and then we'll show you what to do next. And a tip that uh, I just discovered, because I was trying to, I was trying to put these indentations on the pipe in the garage on the table, and they kept moving around and rolling. Um, so. I'm just doing it on the ground out here and this works pretty good because as soon as you start beating on it, it kind of works its way down to the ground and stabilizes it and then you can put your foot back there maybe and put your chisel there and start hammering on it. It's been working pretty good for me. I should note before I do this video, because I feel like some people are going to be uh, getting on to me for it, when you cut on this zinc, zinc when you cut on this um, galvanized metal. You want to make sure you're in a well ventilated area i'm outside don't be cutting on this stuff inside your garage with the door shut if you're in the garage and you got to cut on it try to ventilate it get a fan going to suck the fumes out the reason that's bad to breathe in is because it uh, contains zinc and whenever you cut this stuff it releases zinc uh zinc fumes into the air and it can cause uh, what do they call that it's called a metal fume fever and it lasts for about a day. It's about like getting the, it's flu-like symptoms. And then of course, if, if you don't work around this stuff all the time, you probably wanna, wanna make sure you got some gloves on because um, people that don't work around this stuff a lot, that, that, zinc, um, that zinc dust can really irritate your skin. I've been working around this crap all my life. Just, just make sure you protect yourself 
and uh, hey you can get a respirator if you want to go that far um, I would just say cut on it outside don't be working directly over the stuff you know you can use a, a sawzall that'll cut the stuff um, a lot a lot more cool than a grinder wheel a grinder gets it so hot that it releases those fumes I don't like a sawzall because the cuts just aren't very uh, straight usually and it usually you have to have two people because when you start to cut it's going to move that post around so anyway just be careful guys um that's my psa on this so we got all our extensions in and now it's time to uh run our string line first we got to figure out how tall we want to do it and we have a uh, reference right here on the end so you just want to measure right up next to the post measure how tall that is just run with that and do the same on the end post way down there see how tall that is run you a string line that'll give you a pretty straight reference uh, if you have a dip in your yard uh, I wouldn't follow the string line because you, you kind of if, if you have a real if you have quite a bit of contour to your yard um, sometimes you just want to follow that I got a little bit of a dip in my yard so I just went with that um, unless you're one of those people that just wants everything to be exactly straight but where we're gonna run the string line see where that puts us and then go from there whenever you measure these you want to make sure you measure to where your cut is going to be on the post I got these old-school corner uh, connectors can't find those at Lowe's so where the post is cut is right here you can see right there the post goes up in there so we're measuring to right there and of course you can do uh, different styles on these too um, this is the newer kind which is a little more it's it's easier to work with because you can just put this post as high as you want cap it off and then you can run your clamp wherever you want on this post that one down there doesn't allow you to do that you're just stuck wherever it's at so um, I like that one looks better, but this one is more versatile for sure All right, so let's go ahead and get this measured and uh, we got a bunch of concrete piled up that down there So we're gonna take uh, we're gonna add two inches to our measurement because you want a measurement from the ground So uh, there's the concrete We're at about 63 and 5 8 So we'll add let's make it 64 and 5 8 let's add an inch Okay, so we're changing where we're measuring from because the ground is just not a good reference point. Um, the concrete messes everything up and it's it's just not adding up. The only good reference we really have is the fence. So let's measure off the fence. See how, how much we got between the fence and right there. And we'll do the same on the other end. Alright, so we're on the top of the fence and it's kind of hard to do this. 28 and a half okay so that method didn't work very good either because it made that end a lot taller than this end so <laughs> uh, this is a process okay here's how we're gonna do it okay so these fence post extensions these are these are three these are two and a half feet and we got them on the four middle posts there whatever you call those um, we weren't able to do that the same on the end but if we were uh, everything will be pretty much straight so if we did that it would be right off this post down here and uh, you'd run 30 inches off of that well that's pretty damn close um, not perfect it's about 29 and a half so now we do the same down here and there's my original mark <laughs> what was that 29 and a half okay see that's way that's way higher and I'll tell you the reason for that. The reason it's shorter down there is because technically it's not. The fence just has a lot of soot and runoff that has built up over time. Because that gate down there, <laughs> that gate is about uh, 8 inches underground. That's why it's shorter down there, but we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to do it to where everything looks straight on this panel. We're just going to measure. 29 and a half right off of that all the way up to here and uh, run our string line well we cut off um, the top of that we got our cap back on so now it's time to put 
top rail back on here with this top rail. See if I can do this with one hand. There you go. Oh, that's hot. That is hot. I'm trying to. Oh man, I need. Some. All right, boys. We got some gloves now. Let's try this again. goes right there oh, crap we can't reach that post damn it so we gotta put that one on first well we got put up you know because i had to put some posts in the ground that are a little closer we got a little bit we got cut there's how it looks down the line that hump right there that's just a bin because i'm using the existing railing because this railing is expensive um, but that down there at the end, I don't like that. So we're going to cut just a little bit off that post to get rid of that hump. And here's where the hump is. You can get a pretty good idea where you need to cut just by pulling it out of the post. And let's walk down here to the end. And that looks a lot better. No more hump. Pretty, pretty straight. Looks like it maybe dips a little, so we're, we'll cut a little bit above that. All right, so we made our cut. Let's uh, let's see where this puts us. Uh, get on there. There we go. Oh man, that looks that looks good. I like that. It's pretty straight, as you can tell. Um, every fence is going to be different. I'm just kind of giving you some pointers, and trying to help some people out. Anyway, that looks pretty good. Uh, follows the fence line pretty well. Looks good and straight. And uh, now it's time to put the panels up. And I got these panels at Tractor Supply. They are three foot by 16 feet hog panels. I think they're like 25 or 30 bucks a piece. They're pretty cheap. I wanted something pretty lightweight too. Um, not like this. This crap here is heavy. And you gotta cut it. This stuff is five foot by 16 feet. And of course you'd have to cut, you know, all the way down this to get your, uh, you know, two and a half foot mark or whatever. And these are like 75 bucks a piece. And this is the first thing I should have done this morning was to go and put these things over here in the shade. Because they're, uh, it sucks handling these things when they've been sitting in the sun all day and they're hot. Well, we'll let them cool. Okay, these things are, uh, this one at least is ready to put up. And of course the easiest way to get this stuff put up is uh with the help of somebody but i'm going to show you that it can be done by yourself so before you put this up go ahead and put on each end of the panel some wire and i use this galvanized steel fence wire put you just go ahead and hang one piece up here go ahead and secure it to the rail do the same on the other end and then then you can lift this up Kind of get it to where it needs to be wrap that wire around it do the same on the other end all right we got it up like i said this isn't where it's going to sit permanently but this is just to get it up there these are what you use to hold it these little ties you get uh, i think they're like aluminum or something and to do those because they don't give you much to work with you can you start out like this you want the top side of this against the post because believe me, you need every bit of this thing. And then you wrap it around it. It's kind of hard to work with one hand. I'm about to put this down. Okay, and that's kind of how it'll end up looking. And then uh, you want to get your, get your pliers. You can kind of secure it better with these pliers. Just make sure you don't grind on it real hard. Because these things are, uh, they are very easy to cut. I kind of do it like this. Do that kind of like if you're making a barbed wire fence <laughs> I'm just sitting here assuming everybody knows how to do a barbed wire fence but that's all I did growing up okay so that's one we got uh, one of the panels up it's not obviously not secured right now but it's where I want it to be pretty much I got to get some more fence ties but uh, when I do you know you can kind of you can work with this stuff to get rid of some of that slack um, like I did on that one we'll just do these next two panels same as we did this one and then we'll secure everything 
And here's uh, another trick if you guys uh, have any problems getting this secured up to the fence. Just get you, this is a big jumbo pair of vice grips. Uh, once again, tractor supply. And uh, you can just secure it. Now you can tie it a little easier than trying to hold it at the same time you're tying it. It's been about, I don't know, a week. And uh, I just got back home. Figured I would make a little video showing the end result of this fence. Got her painted up. Here's the reason right here I made the fence. Because this, this dog here, Duo, um, he can jump like a deer. It's, it's crazy how high this dog can jump. And uh, he's a tornado. He He's destroyed a lot of stuff out here already. Might end up having to make some kind of cage around that AC. Because who knows, he might eat something off of there. He's destroyed the dryer vent um, cover. And I know that because there's a little piece right over here that he, uh, yeah, destroyed. But anyway, there's the end result. Came out pretty good from what I'm thinking. Um, I know I mentioned the chalk line about a million times in the video. Really a chalk line is more for um, making sure like your posts are straight, that they line up. You know, it's kind of something you do when you're putting your posts in the ground, making sure that they're not leaning one way or the other. Like I said, you know, I'm not professional or nothing at all this, but I like to make these videos because a lot of the videos posted by the professional fence companies, they're going to be using tools and using methods that just aren't feasible to to people like me and you. You know, we, we don't have all the expensive equipment that they have, and we wouldn't go and buy that stuff just for one-time use. That would, wouldn't make any sense. So I'm just trying to make videos for people to, uh, to do this themselves. Um, a lot of us try on there. I ain't going to lie, but... That's that's fine. That's just life, right? But here's my little gate. And uh, speaking of trial and error, I made this opening a little too. I made it a little too narrow. I didn't realize you gotta have, you gotta allow for the width of the gate plus plus another um, what is that about a oh inch and a and a half maybe. So the width of the gate plus three inches. And see over here I had to like move these hinges around just to make this thing work. So now it only opens one way. <laughs> but uh, we made it work, right? It's the only way it opens. And one last thing on this. If you are wanting to rip out the chain link like I was originally wanting to do, I would, uh, I would suggest cutting it as close to the ground as you can. Uh, because this stuff is, at least in my case, it is in there. And as soon as you start pulling, um, it's just going to break. The more you pull it, the more stuff's going to break. And, and it, oh my God, it's a nightmare. And I know this because the posts, the posts just didn't want to come out of the ground. There was roots all around them. So, uh, yeah, I would at least advise to cut it close to the ground. You could even cut it maybe a little bit up from the ground and then tie the new fence into it. It would definitely make a good barrier um, for dogs. That's one thing I like about this old fence is it's it's uh, buried deep in the ground, so I don't have to worry about this hurricane right here digging under the fence because he'd have to dig to China. That's it, guys. Well, don't forget to, to subscribe to my channel, like, comment, you know, or just don't do anything. It's all good. And uh, but if you do though, you'll get a dog. You'll get a dog like this one right here. Come here, come here, duo. Come here, duo. Sit, sit, sit. Shake, shake, shake hands. Come on, let's shake. There you go. It's a good boy.